Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video we're going to revisit the last video where I updated the X20S to the latest version of EFOS. And the reason for this is I've had a comment from Philip Royf who said that people who aren't so computer literate may struggle to get through that section, and then in fact he was struggling to get it done. So what I'm going to do is go through slower and show exactly where you, you get to everything on the computer as well so if you've seen the last video it all works fine don't worry about that uh, and if if you've managed to get through with our video great but this video we're just going to look in a bit more detail for people who maybe aren't so computer literate so let's get on So the first thing that we need to check is what our current firmware version is on our transmitters. So if we power on, and skip our warning messages, and we're going to go in the system menu, scroll across and go to info. And the second line down, you can see a number here. It says 1.0.7 and the next letters are EU. For you, that may be FCC or Flex. Um, but you need to make note of 1.0.7, which is the, the number, and then the, the letters that come after it, because that's the firmware that we will need. All right, so now what we're going to do, we'll leave this here, I'll power it off, and then we'll head back onto the computer. So next we want to head to the FreeSky RC EFOS feedback community. I'll put the link in the description. But from this home page, we want to click on this word releases right here. And the, the actual link that I'll put it in the description will go straight to this page. So I've just told you that in case you end up back at the main page, the link will take you straight here. Now, what we need to do is have a look at the release that we want to download. We obviously want the latest version, which at the moment is 1.0.7. So what we need to do when we update EFOS is we need potentially three different files. We need the actual firmware itself, we need the SD card contents and we need the flash memory contents. And most of the updates previous have had all of those, but 1.0.7 was the first version that only had a firmware update. So the reason I'm mentioning that is when we looked on our transmitters to get the version, if you saw an older version, like I believe I've heard from people who are still on 1.0.1, then there's a lot of updates and I can guarantee that there's been SD card and flash drive updates in those versions. So because 1.0.7 doesn't have a flash here, you, you will need to go down to the next release, which is 1.0.6 and see if that has it. So you can see here we have a flash and we have an SD zip file. So that's all good. We don't need to go any further. We just need to download those as well. But say, for example, 1.0.8 also doesn't have the flash files. You'll need to still go to 1.0.6 to download those flash files. So you, you basically, if, if a latest release does not have those free files, just go to the next one down that has the files that are missing. So what we're going to do is from 1.0.7, which we're looking at right now, we're going to go down to this bit that says assets and now we look for our transmitter so for me it's the x20s and then uh, remember the letters that we found after the version number we need to get the same file that um, corresponds with those letters so we're just going to click on eu in this case so we just choose where we want to download the zip file to so i'm going to go for the desktop and then click save now, because the SD and flash aren't here, we need to go down to the next release. So we have flash and SD. Of course, if they weren't there, you would go down again and you basically keep going until you find these flash and SD files. The only time that you wouldn't need to do it is, say for example, we're already on 1.0.6. Because this is 1.0.6, we already have those on our transmitter. We don't need them. We can just do the firmware. So because we're doing the full update, I'm going to download them both. So we just need to click on the file name. Again, I'm going to save it to the desktop. And again, the same with the SD card contents. So once this finishes, 
we now have all the files saved on our computer. We don't need uh, this internet site anymore, so we can just close it down. Now, the next thing that we want to do is open up Windows Explorer. You can do that by holding down the Windows key and pressing the E key, and that will pop up this. It says File Explorer up there. Or you can, if you have this icon on your start bar, you can click that. Or if you just click on the start button and then start typing Explorer, you'll see this file explorer. So just click on that and that will get us where we want. Now what I'm going to do is just hold it and drag it to the uh, left side of the screen just so that it gives us space and I can see these files here. So what we're going to do now is plug in the transmitter. So we're going to head back to the workbench and what I'm going to do is hold down this enter button here and then a quick press of the power button and that gets us in bootloader mode. Now if that doesn't work, try holding those two trims towards each other so that's in towards the center and also then just click that button. That shouldn't really work anymore but on older firmwares I believe it still worked. So but for this one we're just going to hold down the enter button and press the power button. Next up we want to plug in the USB cable. And don't worry about those beeps, they're just Windows letting you know you've plugged in a USB. And you can also see on screen here we have USB plugged. So now that our transmitter's plugged in, we can see a few things have appeared in Windows. So we have this USB drive here. The, the letters on your computer may be different, but you'll have two things come up that say USB drive. And you see they've sort of opened up down here. They're also displayed here. But what we're going to do is click on where it says this PC. And the reason we're going to do that is because we need to look at the size of the drives. So this first drive, which on my computer is H, which corresponds with this one, you can see is 7.73 megabytes. So basically you're looking for something that's less than eight megabytes and that is the internal flash storage on the transmitter. So what we need to do is look at our zip files we downloaded. So that one is SD. This one here is flash. So if we double click, sorry, it's on my other screen, that will open up this window here. And what we need to do is copy that to this H drive. So you can copy it onto this bit here or you can click on H. Just click, drag and then drop. And that will copy all the files across. So I'm just going to let that run. I'm going to say replace. This is what you should do too if you get a message like that. And this will just take a bit of time to copy the files across. So while this is copying, what I thought I might explain is what these files are for. So these are basically image files that are displaying all the menu options, um, like the little drop down arrows, the uh, little DBI stuff along the top. So if you find that you have graphics that don't look quite right on your transmitter, chances are that this uh, flash is uh, not up to date. So doing the update on that file will probably sort out sort of potentially lining up issues, the wrong text being displayed, that sort of thing on your transmitter. Right, so we're almost done. There we go, all finished. So we can close this one down. We don't need that one anymore. And what I'll do is I'll put this down the bottom so we know that we don't actually need that one anymore. So if we go back to this PC, and again, we're gonna look at these two USB drives. So we know H was the flash memory, so I on, on this computer is going to be the micro SD card that's inside the transmitter. So the standard micro SD card that comes with the transmitter is four gigabyte. So this is 3.74 gigabytes, which ties up nicely. Of course, if you change the SD card, the size could be different. But basically the two new drives that appear on your computer, one is going to be guaranteed less than eight megabytes. That's the flash. And the other one is the SD card. So what we can do, we can double click on I 
or we could have of course click it there it does the same thing and what we're going to do is look at the SD zip file so double click on that and then we're going to take these two folders here drag them in and then let go on on that file and again it's just going to copy all those files across onto uh, the SD card this time Again, I click to replace files. Um, you should do that too. Sorry, I should have actually spoken while I was doing that. Um, but yeah, if it comes up asking if you want to replace files, choose yes, because uh, most of the time if we're doing this, we're updating an older version. So those files may have changed. So just click yes, replace the existing files and we'll make sure we have the latest version. And we're done with that. So we can now close this SD zip file. We'll move this down the bottom. But as far as this goes, we can leave this where it is because the next thing we need to do is copy the firmware across. And that also goes onto the micro SD card. And we just want to put it in the what they call the root, which is the sort of the very first folder, if you like, of the SD card. So we're going to just double click on the EU zip file. We should again get a folder inside with confirmation that it's X20S EU and then just drag this firmware.bin file into the very first level of the micro SD card, which say is the, the root uh, directory. Now, if it's not called firmware.bin, you need to rename it firmware.bin but be careful because sometimes Windows doesn't show these extensions so if we go in view and click the options button if you click on view here it's got a thing saying hide extensions for known types if you take the tick away from that so if you uncheck it and OK you'll get these dot bins and you'll see that on a lot of files so we have dot zip up here yours if you have that checked, might, we'll just say x20s eu, it won't show the dot zip. Um, but yeah, so if you have the extensions visible, make sure that it's called firmware.bin. If it isn't, rename it to firmware.bin, otherwise the update won't happen. So once we have that, we are all done. So now what we need to do is disconnect the USB cable, but we need to do it safely. If you don't do that, you can actually corrupt stuff potentially. So what we're going to do is on this USB drive here, just right click and then click the eject button. And what that will do is safely eject it. We can do it also on that drive and that's it all good to go. What we need to do on the workbench now is unplug the USB cable and you will see the progress bar. This is writing the new version of the firmware to the transmitter. So once that's done, we will go back and look at the version number. Of course, for me, it should be exactly the same, but if you've come from a, an older version, this will now show you that you have the, the latest version on, on your transmitter. Right, so we're all done. So all we need to do is just click the button here and that switches it off. Again, for bootloader stuff, we just single click. You don't need to hold it down. But because we're powering on now, we just need to hold this down. Once that logo appears, you can let go. Right, so any key to get rid of the warnings. System menu, swipe across, info. And then this firmware version here should now be the version that you've just installed on your transmitter. So I hope this was better for you guys. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you found this slower version better and more useful. And of course, please subscribe and click the bell notifications icon as that will help other people get this update done for their transmitters too. Thanks guys. Fly your models like you stole them. See you on the next one.